Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we're working on crochet wire jewelry, and this is a button necklace using a bag of buttons. This one's from Hobby Lobby, but you can uh, get any collection of buttons. If you do use this one, you're going to want to use a little bit of sandpaper because the back of this can be a little bit scratchy on these particular buttons. They're just a plastic button. And uh, let's get started on showing you the materials you need. So you're going to need at least 49 buttons, 45 to 49 buttons, about 15 in a row. And um, you're going to use a little bit more. If you've got some big buttons, you need to alternate. So this back row here that you see, they're all consistently a little smaller. So I've got 19 buttons in that row. So um, 15 per row. We're going to do three rows. And you're going to need a crochet hook. Today I'm using a size K, 10 and a half US or six and a half millimeter. And you'll also need a finding set. You can use a lobster and claw one, or I'm using a toggle and clasp. And I'm also using a 26 gauge wire. This is permanently co colored non-tarnishing wire in the 26 gauge. And I like this brass color, so my findings match that. And then we've also got our tools. You can use a three-in-one tool or use the separate ones. These are round. Uh, uh, pliers, round jewelry pliers or needle nose pliers. This is a cutter, an angled cutter, and then a crimper. And then this particular one has three in one. We've got the round plier, the crimper here, and then like a side cutter here. All right, so let's get started. Once you've gathered your supplies, you're going to load on a row, set up your row, and then load it onto your wire first. Just simply taking the buttons and um, laying them through and I face them in um, varying directions or you can just use um, all the same direction um, it really doesn't matter um, you just want them to um, be able to get on there and it doesn't matter if you loop them back through the different holes um, just kind of keep going in order Alright, I've loaded 15 buttons onto this wire and now we're going to start this row here. Go about two inches in or five centimeters, wrap it around your finger and then poke through the wire that's coming from the spool. And where that loop comes up, I'm going to grab your crochet hook and make this a little tighter here. And make sure that you want to keep it on this long part, uh, the gauge part of your uh, hook so that it's the right size and then wire over and make one chain and we're going to make a second chain so we've got actually we've got our first one that we did one two three four five six keep going we're going to go until we have 17 And I like to do 17 on mine because I like it a little longer. If you want to do 16, that's fine too. So when you get to the first one, you're going to slide that on. Okay, this is your first button. And you can also this, do this pattern with beads too. Now we've got the, this button chained and it's locked in position. You want to chain one and then grab the next button. So slide that next button over, lock it into position with the chain, and then chain one. Okay, and then grab the next button, lock it in, and then chain one. So that's really all you're doing the entire way down is chain one, chain on a bead or, or button, and then chain one again. Grab a bead or button and continue. When you get to the larger buttons or larger beads, you just want to adjust around it. 
and you want to lock it in but not make it way too loose either. Okay, so I'm going to get that in there to where it's, I don't want it too tight and too loose. If I get it too tight, um, it could cause uh, too much friction, um, too loose, uh, and it may, um, this, this may pull a little bit and adjust over time. So too loose and it will really look kind of saggy. So um, make sure it's nice and taut up the, up the top, chain again, and continue. So when you get to the end, I'll meet you back up. So I got to the end of adding all my 15 buttons and we want to chain 17. And here I have not got it all the way up on my gauge and so it wasn't going through right. And when you've got the 17, we're going to go ahead and on this last one, pull through about two inches again and cut it. And then you're going to make one more just like this one. And then one more with 19. You'll do it the same way, just chaining uh, 17. And then um, go ahead and make all these. You'll, you'll end up having uh, an extra length to it, but that's okay. All right, well, see you when you finish all three of them. And before we start again, make sure and flatten this back up so that it all lays straight and flat and um, not twisted up. And so um, you should have three of them kind of laying about like this. See you in a moment. Just a quick tip after you load all of your beads or buttons on, you can swirl around your wire down the here at the end with your finger, and that way it keeps them from going too far and sliding off. You can also put a bowl to the side and put them in there, and then that way it doesn't fall to the floor or get tangled up. All right, I'll meet you back when you have done three of these. I've made my three chains of buttons, and I've laid them out very flat. And see, you can see it doesn't matter if they're backwards or not. Now these color buttons are nice because they're the same color on both sides and they may have different textures on them like shiny versus the matte, um, the, the gloss level, but that's okay. If you have a button that's gonna be white on the back and brown on the front, you may or may not want that. So um, that's why I kind of like this bag of buttons here. Now, as you can see, I put the one that has a lot of the smaller or medium size right in the middle and then these two here. And if you notice, I've got some big buttons and they sort of alternate. Like I've got four big ones on this one and three big ones on this one. It's all gonna get intertwined, uh, intertwined now. So we're gonna take them and go to one side and grab the, um, the last chain from all three, put them together. So you got one, two, three and wind it together. So twist it right at that base here and then keep winding. Okay, it's gonna make a nice tight little wound braid there. Okay, if you can see that. All right, and then we're going to turn this on its end and just do a standard um, three-pronged braid, okay? So we're just gonna um, kind of flip them over each other and braid them. And it really doesn't matter. I mean, I know I lined it up. I just wanted you to see what it was sort of gonna look like all put together. And just weave this kind of loosely. I have another video called Crochet Wire Jewelry, and it shows this one with far less buttons, just three. Well, it's actually three beads. And I go into more details. So just gonna Bring this up and meet me at the other end and we will put on the uh, toggle and clasp or your lobster claw, whatever you're gonna use as you're finding.
And as you can see, I sped up part of that process, but I want you to see um, kind of how I had to weave it. And then I actually undid it just a little bit uh, because my middle strand that had all the small medium buttons um, was quite long. So I had to go back and I sort of wove that in a few more times than what I really needed to on the other. So you just kind of have to mess with it, but it's good because it adds a little bit of extra kind of thickness in it. This necklace is actually um, a my original necklace that I wore in a lot of um, uh, reviews and videos that people loved and requested for such a long time. And um, what I didn't realize at the time is um, how much my toddler was going to ruin it. And um, so you don't want to have a small child pulling on this a lot. So he actually pulled it so much it broke it, but I wore it a lot. So um, anyway, I just want you to know uh, this is not for wearing this with small children. Um, but you can take and cut all these buttons off, like cut them on the ends and undo it. So I actually did and laid them all out to remake this necklace. And then I just switched out a few buttons. So now that I'm at the end, let's pinch uh, and make sure they're all together and twist it and then keep twisting it again and I'll meet you back in a minute and grab your um, findings you're going to use. Okay, I've got this all situated and lined up. I kind of gave it a little bit of a tug and moved my buttons around how I want them. I kind of like it where it gets smaller and gets graded bigger and towards the middle and then uh, now I want to finish the ends here. Um, what I want you to do is take the necklace and shape it how you would want to wear it, okay? And then turn your little padding that you're using around, okay? So this is upside down. This would be like if you're looking at the back of the neck. Now, if you were right-handed, uh, you'll want to put the toggle clasp um, this long bar on the right side. If you're left-handed, put it on the other side or whoever you're giving it to. And um, then you can put uh, the receiving end or clasp on the other side. So if you have a lobster claw type, you wanna put that on the right side. I wanna look at it as what's gonna be better for the person wearing it um, because when this is worn, it's gonna go into here and then hold and it's much easier to um, use, at least I have found personally. Now, the way that I have this, because I made it um, 17 instead of 16, my necklace is going to be a little longer than um, you may want. So you might want to put these right at the end, very close. Um, I'm still going to leave it a little bit uh, so that I can hang it long because I'm a little bit bigger person. So I like uh, to wear it that way. want to go ahead and thread on my um, toggle. Now, if you've got a little bit too much, see how this is um, just pretty long. Let's twist this here, and it's uneven. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it, make it easier to thread on. Okay, remove the access and stick on this toggle here. And this is where our little needle nose pliers come in. And you can use regular needle nose pliers too, if you don't have jewelry ones. All right, so I'm gonna pull it down and get these flat here like this. And then um, while I hold part of the toggle, we're gonna take this extra part and wrap it around its own wire, okay? And then you can use this to get it tighter. And then I just kinda use my hands here. And then you can wrap it all the way uh, down to the base here for extra stability or you can cut it up top and make it smooth. On this one I kind of like to make it a little chunkier looking I like the thickness of the extra wire in this case. And once I have it the where I want it I'll cut off the excess. This necklace I I actually make it a little messier looking. I'm not trying to make it look refined. In fact, it's kind of more of an artistic ne necklace, so I'm not trying to be really delicate with the way I'm doing it. But I do want it to where it's not um, rough. It doesn't have any edges that are poking me, or if I'm selling the necklace or giving it away, I don't want it to hurt anyone. But it can be um, kind of sloppily done it's not pristine but it's not going to catch anyone either 
Now we're going to do the other one. Same thing. If it's uneven on the ends, you can just clip that off and then thread through this. Now remember, whatever size of this little ring you have, um, if you want it fairly short, uh, you're gonna, or if you have it long out here, just realize that it's going to add length all the way to the end of this here. So um, you might wanna make it a little shorter on this side, depending upon how long you want that necklace. And then use your wire, your needle nose pliers to move your wire. Around and around. Make sure all your other wire is not, you're not moving it around because if you start twisting all this other wire or this part up here, you could bend and break it. So you are working with wire that can be broken. All right, when you get it to where you want it, go ahead and cut it. Make sure you don't have anything else around, no loops that you're gonna cut by accident. And then use your crimper. This is my three-in-one tool. So if you do have a three-in-one, make sure you're not gonna accidentally use the side part cutter. You wanna use the crimper. Or if you have a regular crimper, like this is a regular crimper, and it has different details that you can use for different types of crimping. Okay, I like this one because it's got a flat on it and fill it with my fingers. I don't want to catch any clothing or jewelry or I should say clothing or fabric, not clothing or jewelry. Okay, so oh, a little bit more. All right. Okay, so then when we put our toggle together, that holds very nicely. You are done with your necklace. I hope you've enjoyed your button necklace today with wire crochet. Thank you again for joining me at Good Knit Kisses and have a great day. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.